I'm doing a series, uh, Anne with an E, Anne of Green Gables, based in Princeton Island, very white book about a very white girl and a very white culture, and then some people started saying, um, excuse me, <laughs> I think there were, I think it was more than white there. And I was given to believe that PEI had slavery, but they were mainly domestic slaves, or they would have been slaves who worked on the farms? Probably, uh, probably a bit of both. Right. Um, since most farms would not have been that vast, Right. Uh, for the most part, uh, so the, yeah, they would have they would have had some um, slaves who worked some of the farms, but yeah, basically Charlottetown uh, would have been the, the site for many slaves who would have been who would have been used as servants, and of course would almost never be called slaves, but would have been called indentured servants or servants for life, and so on. These were the euphemisms that were used, right. but they were slaves, right. Right. pure and simple. Right. And, and their children would be, would be slaves as well. And unlike the Africville, which survived, if that's the right word, in Halifax, the kind of Africville of Charlottetown was booted off the island, if I remember correctly. Well, okay, I have to confess that my knowledge of this history is, is not as sure-footed as it was at one point. Uh, but I'm not sure that that's exactly what happened. They were um, uh, free blacks. Uh, in PEI in Charlottetown were housed in an area known as the Bog, right. which was not far from the legislature. Uh, and, and, uh, and this was a pattern for many uh, black uh, settlements around Nova Scotia, for instance. Uh, they were often placed on either very barren, rocky, stony land or in swamps or, vir or virtual swamps, marshes. Places where they would be, Im where it would be impossible for them to become independent farmers, uh, where they would have no choice if they stayed in Nova Scotia or, for that matter, in PEI, they would have no choice but to work as, as if they were free, free, of course, they would have to work for the lowest possible wages, as, as uh, for the most part, uh, unskilled labor, uh, or low skilled labor, or what have you, and and uh, uh, in Nova Scotia. This apartheid pattern of economic development, social development, was, was entrenched simply because of the fact that the free black communities were all located outside of larger white towns and villages. So beside a white village, you'd have a black hamlet. Beside uh, a white town, you'd have a black village. Right. Uh, and in some of these places, there were laws that said if you were black, you could not own land in that white town or that white village. Also, if you were black, you had to be out of town by sundown. So the impact of all this, of these measures, uh, along with the provision of very bad land in the first place, was to relegate the black settlements to a high degree of, of poverty and illiteracy because schools were also segregated. Uh, and it was up to the communities to be able to raise the funds to provide teachers and schools. And most of them were too poor to be able to do that on a consistent basis. So they were dependent upon, uh, upon charity for education. So right up until the 1960s, it was uh, uh, quite common for a black Nova Scotian adult, an African Nova Scotian adult, to have grade six, maybe grade three, grade three or grade six. That's it.